Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to my channel. Make sure if you like these kind of videos, you like what you see, you subscribe, uh, you comment, and uh, and hit the like button. Hit the little bell button too. That that'll give you notifications of whenever I, I post a new video. So I hope you enjoy the dish. If you do try it, uh, post a comment on it. And let me know. Uh, let me know how it worked out for you. And if you have any suggestions or you know, again any comments, let me know. Today we're going to be attempting a pork tenderloin in the power air fry oven. Uh, we're going to do a stuffed pork tenderloin. Uh, we're going to butterfly it, open it up, put some stuffing inside, uh, roll it, tie it up, throw it in the oven, and see uh, see how it comes out. Uh, it should come out pretty good. Uh, I've done this before with uh, in a regular oven. I'm going to be using the rotisserie for this for this uh, recipe. So let's uh, let's get started. So this is the tenderloin. Now what we're going to do, we're going to butterfly it. We're going to slice it down the middle, and then we're going to try to open it up, trying to make it maybe about a half inch, uh, maybe to, up to an inch thick at its thickest areas, and so we can roll it up. So let's uh, let's get started by cutting it. So we're going to we're going to cut right down the middle here. Now some some of these tenderloins they have pieces cut uh, cut off on it. We're just going to clean that off. Take that off now. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of fat here, but we're going to trim that. I'm going to trim that off, just to take most of the fat off. And we're going to leave some on because it will help on the basting. So I'm going to cut it right down the middle here. You don't want to go too far down. You want to go uh, about three quarters or so down, just so you can flap it open. So it opens up. Okay. Then what we're going to do? We're going to, we're going to slice it in an angle, going in this direction here, so we can so we can open it up. So let's, let's get it going. Okay, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be good when we're done. I like to make a few extra cuts in here just so the juices and the stuffing has a place to go. Okay, I'm going to do the same on this side here. Just cut into a 45 degree angle and then just start slicing. Open it up. So when you're done, you have this all set up for you. We're going to season a little bit, not too much, because uh, our stuffing, our stuffing mix is going to have plenty of seasoning in it, uh, and uh, all the other flavorings we're going to add to the outside. Okay, for this segment, we're gonna set up the, the stuffing mix. This is just a regular box mi mix stuffing that you buy in any uh, any of the stores, any of the supermarkets. This is just a regular stuffing mix that you use for chicken or your turkey on Thanksgiving. What I uh, created earlier is the sausage and uh, onion and mushroom mixture here. We're gonna add that to here. And also uh, our liquid, which is, I'm using chicken broth. Uh, probably about a half a cup or so. I'm going to see how the consistency goes. We do want it a little bit softer than, uh, than your normal stuffing mix. So follow the instructions on the box and just judge it. Just make it softer so it, uh, it does kind of stick inside there and keep the moisture on the inside. So we're going we're gonna to start at by adding the mixture we created earlier. So get all those juices, all the, uh, all the oil and stuff that, uh, that it gave off. We're just going to create or put that all in there. So we're going to put that all in there anyway. And you can smell the garlic that we added and the onions and the mushrooms. Uh, 
It smells really good. So we're gonna make sure we get it all in there. And then we're gonna add the, uh, the liquid part. A little at a time, just to kinda make sure we don't over soak it. And get in there and mix it up. Once we get this all mixed up, we wanna let it sit and absorb all the liquid. Uh, so probably let it sit for about uh, five, 10 minutes uh, until it absorbs everything. And we can double check at that point. So we'll just add that in. So it, it, as you do it, I mean, in the beginning, you're gonna see, it's gonna seem a little dry. It's like, oh, I might have to add more. Just let it sit because it will absorb and you wanna, you wanna make sure that uh, you don't overdo it. You're not making soup here. So uh, let's just mix it up a little bit more. And you can see the mixture here. It's somewhat dry, but uh, as it absorbs, it's gonna get uh, a little bit more moist, more soft, or uh, more pasty-like, so we can layer it in there. And we'll put the hard-boiled eggs on top of it. So we'll come back at that point. Okay, we're back here. We're gonna start assembling this pork loin. I've got three hard-boiled eggs that we're gonna stick in the middle here. And also some seasoning. Uh, this is just some Italian seasoning, uh, added a little bit of paprika to it. I didn't add any salt because the stuffing mix uh, has got plenty of salt in it, so we're, we're not gonna add any additional salt. We can always add it later uh, when we cut it. So I'm just gonna season it up a little bit. Not too much lightly because there is plenty of uh, seasoning in the, uh, in the mix, in the stuffing mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the stuffing mix into uh, one end of it. So you just want to add it to the one end where the eggs are going to go. That's going to give it a little bit of depth. Also, I keep the eggs from rolling back and forth while you work. Okay. And you don't want to go all the way to the end because you're going to need this side here to, to roll it in. Okay, we're going to take our hard boiled eggs. And for this this size here, uh, it was only about uh, maybe a pound and a half, uh, maybe two pounds tops. Uh, you're only gonna need, kind of need about three, three eggs. We're just gonna line it up as many as we need here. I measured it earlier just to make sure. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna add a little bit more here on the edge, keep it going. But uh, about uh, an inch or so, two inches from the from the end, uh, just so we're not we're not uh, we're not fighting with it at the end. You don't want to go too tight, uh, but you do want to hold it in there. Okay. And that's, that's about it there. Push the eggs in. And hold that tight. Now what we're going to do it uh, at the end of this, I'm, I'm going to also wrap this with uh, some bacon, hickory bacon. Uh, strips and then we're going to tie it up and put it in the rotisserie so i'm going to i'm going to add the bacon to it uh, when we come back all right we're going to be adding the bacon on here i'm just going to wrap it around take one slice at a time and just you know, just tuck it in underneath it It'll be a little careful here so it doesn't open up but the bacon will hold itself together it, it is a little sticky the, the grease on it kind of holds it together one of the other things you want to do is as you wrap the bacon around, you want to kind of offset the openings so the seam is not all in one spot. And again, that'll help keep it together while you're working here and also when you're tying it up later on. So we're just going to add uh, the bacon. I have here about five or six slices. 
you want to uh, you want to keep them pretty tucked in together. You don't want to uh, overlap them too much, but also don't put too much space between them because they'll they'll kind of curl over when it, when they cook. Just add a couple more here. one on this one okay we'll just uh, tuck this in and make sure everything's nice and tight tuck in the eggs make sure the eggs aren't coming out okay now we're ready to uh, string it and tie it up okay we're gonna take the string here uh, we're gonna slide it underneath here just so it's so much easier to tie from the top instead of trying to wrap it around uh, and I'm just gonna cut, uh, cut the string approximately to the uh, twice the length that I need uh, just so in case uh, the string breaks as I tie it, I'll have a little extra here. I won't have to fight with it. You want to use uh, about one one piece of string for each uh, bacon piece. And, and I, I line the, the string around the center uh, meaty part of the uh, of the bacon so, it, so it'll hold. Uh, I won't let the bacon fall off. So uh, we're going to cut up a few more here. And uh, start tying it up. And uh, when you tie it up, you want to you want to make sure you don't tie it too tight. Uh, what'll happen is as the pork shrinks, uh, you know you'll you'll have uh, the eggs and the stuffing try to slide out of it. And you want to make sure that uh, you know, just tie it up uh, tight enough so it uh, it holds everything together. Uh, it doesn't have to be super tight. Okay, and uh, when we tie it here, don't, don't worry about the excess string. We're, we, we're going to uh, uh, cut all that off. Uh, I'm just going to speed up the video here so uh, you're not watching me tie everything up uh, at real time. We're going to just make sure you cut all the excess off, especially on a rotisserie. You want to make sure that you cut the excess string off uh, so it doesn't get caught or start burning uh, in the rotisserie. Uh, also, it looks nicer, it looks neater and cleaner. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we use the rotisserie rod. We want to send the uh, the rod with one of the forks already attached. We want to put that in uh, roughly the, the center, as close to the center as you can, right through the eggs. Uh, so that'll help keep the eggs in place. And also you want to make sure that the fork points uh, of the rotisserie uh, uh, piece. You want to make sure that that uh, the fork edge actually cuts uh, uh, gets into the meat part of the uh, of the pork loin or any meat uh, when you when you're doing a roll like this. So you want to make sure you slide the rod right through the center here and ca catch as much of the meat as you can without uh, without tearing into it too much, uh, so it holds the meat with the eggs in the center. So you push that all the way through, uh, and then put in the closing fork on the on the other side of it here. And once uh, once I'm done with this, we're gonna walk it over to the uh, power air fryer oven and uh, get it started here. So here we are. We're gonna put it in. Let's put it into the slot here, and then the secondary slot on this side here. Make sure it sits in there and has plenty of free movement. Uh, on both sides of it. So uh, we're going to put the door on this. The doors are removable, so that uh, does help on these units. So we'll just get the door in there. And it slides in and snaps shut. And we'll power it on. And what I'm going to use here is the meat setting. Uh, it's set to 25 minutes to start. Uh, but that that's fine. We're gonna increase that uh, Turn the light on and also this uh, the circle uh, Icon on the on the rotisserie. That's a manual rotisserie. You can turn it turn it on and off uh, or Keep it from uh, rotating uh, on, By hitting this button and also if you hit it twice, it'll stop the rotisserie and then uh, uh, Rotate it in the opposite direction So if, you, if you're doing it manually, uh, which I've done in the past if the piece of meat is too big now, I, I've had to add about 40 minutes to the timer. 
Okay, so here you have it. See, it's been cut already. Take, I want to cut another slice into it. Now, uh, I left this, the string on there, so you can take it off as you cut. So it doesn't fall apart on you. See it here. Very nice cut. Okay, we got to cut a whole piece of here. Cut a little piece of this fork right here. You can taste the, the bacon, the crispy bacon on the outside, and a little bit of the egg, the mixture. Pork is cooked perfectly, about 146 degrees on the internal temperature. Make sure if you like these kind of videos, you like what you see, you subscribe, uh, you comment, and uh, and hit the like button. Hit the little bell button too. That, that'll that give you notifications of whenever I, I post a new video. So I hope you enjoy the dish. If you do try it, uh, post a comment on it. Let me, know, uh, let me know how it worked out for you. And if you have any suggestions or, you know, again, any comments, let me know.